the wind for this moment. Well, I was just going to say congratulations, and how are you feeling? But maybe you can expand on waiting for this moment. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I've been feeling uh, pretty good since leaving that cage, and uh, I, I see a lot of fighters. I see a lot of my friends who fight uh, up here, and uh, I never got the chance to get up here. And it just it, it feels really good right now to see all these faces here, and all the eyes are on me right now. And I worked really hard to get here. And, yeah. This is a good feeling. Can you kind of um, describe to us a little bit about the time off and what you went through during that time to, to be able to get back here? Yeah, the time off I had was for a couple of reasons, but one of the reasons was uh, my, my knee injury from uh, one, of the, um, one of the fights, my previous fights, and uh, just uh, mental health uh, I had to go through. And, um, you know, that took almost like a year and a half, two years. But uh, thanks to the UFCPI for helping me with my, my knee injury and the, the psychiatrist at the PI who helped me with my, my mental state, uh, you know, they, they, plus my coaches, they got me to this point. How do you feel about your performance overall? Uh, overall, I feel good. Um, I made a few mistakes. That's why I have these crutches. But uh, I'm pretty sure once I look back on the video, I'll, I'll be amazed at the performance I gave. Did the fight go the way that you kind of had expected, or were, were there surprises with your opponent? I was actually surprised that he uh, was still up after a few bangs that I gave him. Um, dude's got a hard head, and uh, I'll give him credit for keeping in the fight for all three rounds. Was there any pressure going into this fight that this could be win or be cut? Yeah, no, yeah, that was <laughs> that was basically the whole camp was me sitting here stressing, trying to keep my balloon um, with me the whole camp and uh, make sure that you know I stay in the now and not think about okay what happens if I lose this fight am I out and is are people just going to forget about me and cut me loose and you know I, I did what the psychiatrist said Micah at the at the PI and I, I held on to my balloon and I stayed in the now every single day out through camp and uh, it, it put me here. Can you explain what the balloon means? Yeah, so I, um, for weigh-ins, I had a red balloon. A lot of people well, I thought it was like an it thing, but it, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't an it thing. Um, Mike at the UFC PI uh, taught me, besides a few breathing techniques, uh, he taught me how to to hold on to my balloon. For me and a lot of people, when when we think about the, the past or we think about the future, we, we get anxiety. Um, my hands personally start to sweat, my heart beats super quickly, and then I'm just in my head about whichever one I'm thinking about, the past or the future. So, you know, Micah taught me uh, to exercise with holding on to my balloon, stay in the now. And whenever I still exercise it to this day, and if I'm thinking about the past or if I'm thinking about the, the future, I now can feel that and knowingly know, okay, I can feel my heart start to beating. My hands are getting a little bit sweaty. Let me hold on to my balloon and let me make sure I'm in the now, which is and right now. I'm talking to you guys. I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm not thinking about the next fight. I'm not thinking about the, the loss that I had last time. And I'm just right here. You know, and after that amazing explanation, I'm going to ask you what's next. Right now, uh, we're going to get these injuries checked out first. Um, that's the most important thing to make sure uh, we can get back out here. Uh, and then, you know, go party out in Arizona. Thank you so much. Thank you. Turn over here. Uh, you said there were a couple of mistakes, that, and that's kind of why you have the crutches right here. What's specifically in there and the mistakes you made, and how are phys you feeling physically? Like, what hurt, what's hurting right now? Um, legs, a little bit. Uh... Maybe the takedowns, but I mean, those are kind of natural. Like my knee's gonna hit the ground no matter what off of a takedown. But I should have been checking some kicks that he was throwing <clears throat> and I didn't. Like one check, I, I know I felt like the third, maybe the second or third round I checked a kick, but, uh, and the head, like he was throwing a lot of threes and fours and we were, we were trying to practice on those, like make sure we watch out for those threes and fours. And uh, he cracked me a few times. 
in the first round, you were throwing a lot of side kicks, and I think you even threw like three or four wheel kicks. And even Joe Rogan was like, I don't think I've seen anyone throw this many wheel kicks in the first round right out of the gate. So was that part of the game plan or just in the moment? Daniel Cormier might have said you were a little excited to get back in there, and that's where all these wheel kicks were from. Is that just part of the actual game plan, though? Uh, I've, I've done Taekwondo when I was uh, like 10 or 11, and that's always been in my game. I just never showed it. That's all. And you even dropped him with the left hook, I think it was in the second round. Was that just an adjustment you saw that you could capitalize on that after the first round, or was that also just part of the game? It was an adjustment, and my coaches have, have told me. Uh, I knew we both knew that he was ready for my right hand, <clears throat> and it was obvious that he was dodging my right hand. But me and my coaches know that my left hook is pretty hard, just as hard as my right hand. So uh, we adjusted a few things in that second round, third round. And then you had said you were surprised that the amount of damage he took without going down. It seems like after the fight, when you went to like go hug him, he wasn't even kind of there. It kind of looked kind of glazed over. Where, did you say anything to him after, or did, or did he look mentally there after the fight? Somewhat, yeah. I kind of felt that he kind of gave up at like that last round, and as you know, the minutes started ticking down. Especially when I hit him hard uh, the last few times, I, I knew that was it for him. But, uh, yeah, after the third bell, you know, I can kind of see that he was down about it. And, I mean, it, it happens. The, the dude's 10-2 and two now. I mean, he still has a good record. He's, I think he's 30. Like, he still has a future here. Um, losses hurt. I've, I've had a devastating loss before this fight. And, you know, I'm up here now. So if, if he can hold on to his balloon and come back, he'll come back stronger. Hey, Journey, congrats on the win. You look like Shawn Michaels out there with all those sidekicks. But uh, mm -hmm. Bernie was leaning heavily on that lead leg. It seemed like you started to chop down on that in the second round. Uh, was that something your corner noticed after the first round? And is that uh, something that they uh, advised you to do, chop down on that lead leg? We were, yeah, we were planning on that for, for camp. We were doing that with camp. But uh, I'm, I'm a hard-headed listener, and I have to be told like a thousand times. So coach told me during the first and second round, you know, chop that leg. And at some point, I listened, I guess. <laughs> and uh, he was also relying on his counter left hooks. Did you notice that during the fight? And what adjustments did you make in response to those counters? Yeah, we watched a lot of um, video to, to make sure that we were ready for that hook. And he hit me with it a few times and woke me up a little bit. But uh, I kind of started to figure out the timing of it and started to see that hook fly. And then I also see that, that the four, the rear hook, or the, the overhand right. And you guys see, uh, I was ducking under that one as well. So we're prepared. Journey, hi. <clears throat> Coming off those two losses and the no contest when they got overturned, unfortunately, does this win just kind of put you on, on like a, a positive, like almost like a high, you know, to, to maybe push you like ahead in your career? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Um, especially another win over Texas. That's you know that that feels great over Texas because they're the one who took that one away from me. But no, this solidifies that I beat two Texas guys, and that that first one shouldn't have been overturned in the first place. Like that was a dominant win, and it should have been overturned o over some uh, marijuana penalty that I wasn't even high over. Like I, it wasn't like I was sitting here smoking backstage. Um, I, I stopped a few weeks after. Um, just like I've did uh, every other fight, and because they have a lower threshold, I got popped for it, and that's not fair to any of us fighters at all. And what does celebration look like tonight? Um, Sagan. What does the celebration look like for you and your and your your family, your team tonight? I um I'm pretty sure I won't remember tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good celebration. Thank you, guys.